I need you to help us in rebuilding. You know, we were getting ready to do this in October anyway, and those of you all who've watched me, you've heard me say that it was time for us to expand our sanctuary. Mm. We were turning six to 700 people away every week. The parking was abysmal, but we made it. A lot of people. I told our church that we were gonna start over. And yet again, I believe God said, Keon, your faith was too small. So let me blow the building down so you can build what I put in your heart. So let me give you guys, <clears throat> give you guys a little bit of context of what's going on. So essentially, um, I guess his home church or their home church was affected by a storm that came through and messed up in Houston, which I didn't even realize that Texas was suffering that much as far as storms is concerned. But the home church was affected by what was going on with the storms. And the building became uninhabitable. So as a result, they've been having church at Lakewood, which he, you know, earlier in the stream, we just skipped past all of that. Earlier in this video, he, you know, thanked Pastor Joel Olstein and all of them. And so <clears throat> I guess that's where he's having his message or this recording through. And um, they've been having church services there or whatever. And so they've been having it at night and, you know, as an alternative service to what was happening as far as Joel Olsen and them, I guess, having in the daytime. And then he's saying that the insurance process is a tedious process and it's a hurry up and wait process. But then at the same time, they had already uh, planned on building a building or a sanctuary that's twice the size of the one that they already in because they had already been turning a whole lot of people away, which I can't criticize nor praise who he is or what he does because I have never been to the church. I've never listened to any of the messages. And so when you guys sent this to me to react to, um, I thought that it would be interesting because the whole premise of the, of the video was that he's going to ask for the equivalent of, I guess, $4 million or $2,100 from 2,100, 2100 people to eventually expand the, the sanctuary. Now he already went through and he thanked a lot of people. And so, you know, it's a lot more context. I'm always going to put the link down in the description for y'all to be able to go and check out the full message for yourself. And so we're only going to react to one portion of it, but I wanted to give you the, the cliff notes before we get to the meat and potatoes of the video. All right, let's go ahead and get to it. I want to increase the size of our sanctuary by two. I want to double the size of it so that no one who has an opportunity to get in is turned away because we don't have a seat. We can't wait on the insurance company to do that. I need you from around the world. If I've ever preached a message that has touched your spirit, if I've ever spoken into your life and you started the company that you were not going to start had I not pushed you in faith, if you were thinking about ending your own life, but somehow God gave me a word that made you fight to live another day, I need you. I won't pretend like I can do this by myself. If I could do this alone, trust me, it would be done already. But I am a feeble man who puts himself at the mercy of the court and asks you to join me in a journey because we do not have time to waste. We cannot build and we cannot raise money for three years and then build another two years and have all of these people displaced. God gave me a vision and he said, we can do it in 21 days. Mm. I'm asking 2,100 people to give $2,100 mm. in the next 21 days. And what we're calling it is out of the harbor. You see, a ship is safe in the harbor, but that's not what it was designed for. It's a lot of money, man. And I guess if you do the math, I haven't done the math myself. I'm a C student. I guess if you do the math, that ultimately it calculates up to being about $4 million. And so they're trying to raise $4 million from 2,100 people uh, and or $2,100 from 2,100 people in 21 days so that they can then build this sanctuary that's, that's much bigger while at the same time trying to get the insurance from the building that's uninhabitable as a result of the storm. It's, it's a difficult subject for me to tackle 
but I'm going to attempt to tackle it anyway because I don't like to dodge any smoke and I don't like to dodge any subject that's important and pertinent for the people that ultimately send me these videos in order to react to, right? And so let me say this. It's a tale of two worlds because it's difficult to criticize something that you're not a part of. Yes, I'm a part of a church. Yes, I love God. Yes, I'm a Christian. And but I'm not a part of that church. So I can't criticize him and I don't know where his heart is. Um, I'm not getting anything negative from him in particular, as far as anything that I've seen in the public that would lead me to believe that he's actually leading the people in the wrong space. Right. I haven't seen any crazy stuff or accusations. And so that's one side. And so it's easy, you know, when people were sending me this, you know, they were sending it, sending me this saying, Oh, I can't believe he's doing this. I can't be doing, believe he's doing this. Well, you know, to give them a little bit of rope, if you're not a part of that organization, or if you haven't participated in that church and you don't know what he do, you don't know how much he gives to the community, you don't know any of that other type of stuff. If there's people that's passionate about what he's doing, it's hard for me to criticize it because you can't criticize it from the outside looking in. And that's one of the criticisms that I have for people that then go off on a black church. If you're not a part of the black church, then how can you criticize it? Because you're not familiar with what it takes in order to run it. On the other side, though, because I'm going to be objective on the other side, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money and it's messed up out here. 2,100 people, and I'm not sure how big his church is, but 2,100 people and asking for $2,100 to raise $4 million in order to build it. Man, that's a lot of money. That's a tall ask. And I'm not really sure if, if I'd be comfortable as a leader of a church to ask people to donate that amount of money so that we can expand services but if your heart is pure to reach people. So it's almost like the ask is genuine or it could be genuine, but the ask is gigantic considering what people are going through today. And for them to be able to scrape up that type of money in order to give it to the church is a huge tall task. And I've always felt like the church wasn't necessarily a building. You know what I'm saying? I didn't feel like you needed to have a building in order to have the church. But then at the same time, I understand the importance of congregating in the space. And I'm wondering, is it a more organic way for you to be able to do that and raise that type of money than to ask people to give their last or to give this or to give that or scrape up that type of money in order to give to it? You see what I'm saying? So it's like with me being in the space that I am and understanding the word of God, it's difficult. It's like you caught between a rock and a hard place. But let me let me hear some more of what he got to say. And right now, our ship is in the harbor. And I see a but, lot of people that be telling me, oh, man, ask Shaq. <laughs> ask Shaq for $4 million. No, you can't ask nobody for $4 million. I, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable asking Elon Musk for $4 million if I was cool with him, especially as a husband or the wife, uh, my new wife from the ex-husband. You know what I'm saying? That's a wild ask. Is Shaq even a member? You see what I'm saying? And then... On top of that, I was reading through the comments of this video before I decided to re uh, review it, and all of the people were saying, Lord, bless me to be a blessing to my church, and it was all women. It was all women that were saying, bless me to be a blessing to my church. And so take that into consideration when you hear the rest of this message. You're going to help me through focus and resources to mm -hmm. come sailing out of the harbor, not next month, not next year. But now, it would be easy to retreat and recreate the same space that we had. But we are far too bold for that, far too fearless to accept yesterday. We will enter into uncharted waters searching for God's glory, and we can achieve greatness together, but we can do nothing apart. I've seen the lightning flashing. I've heard the thunder roaring. I've even felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I hear the small, still voice of God saying, fight on. Mm. And he promised to never leave us, to never leave us alone. God is not shifting us to the exact same spot. He wants us to move forward. And you know, I'm not asking for passengers in this new move of God. I need crew members to join us. I need workers to come alongside and chart the course of our new legacy together. It's only to be secured and sacred 
if we do it together. If we do it alone, we will retreat and go back to our former state of being. So I call you from California. I call you from New York. I call you from Florida. I call you from the UK. I call you from Africa to join us in our call to action. 2,100 people, $2,100, 21 days to kickstart our efforts to get back into our building. Kickstart the efforts? Just to start it? We're not waiting on the insurance company to tell us when and where we can do what God has called us to do. We will do it together. And by the way, maybe you've never been in the building, but if you're watching me right now, what you don't know is we call you Lighthouse Nation. That's a lot. That's a lot. So I'm giving you my opinion uh, and my thoughts on it. Uh, I'm curious as to what you guys think. I know it's a lot of people that got a lot of opinions of the church and they're critical of the church. And then there are some people that defend the church. And so I'd like to know what y'all thoughts are uh, before I deep dive into this, because I think that I'm going to do a deeper dive and a review uh, even more of this when I do a little bit more research. But I think that it would be irresponsible of me um, to go any further than a commentary that I've already given, considering that um, I don't know him in detail. I only know of his current wife, which is the ex-wife of Shaquille O'Neal, um, and how it is that they play in this house. So let me know what y'all think inside of the comments. Again, make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description. We just did Sock Club. I love you. I appreciate you guys. Can't wait to hear your, <laughs> your comments on this.